Begin by building the extruder feeder. The method for doing so is the same as in part C, however with a mirrored feeder housing. Another point to note for more reliable printing is to file a flat on the M5 hex bolt and press the set screw against that flat. That should help prevent this um, feeder gear from, from becoming loose over time. Next, attach the feeder arm, but make sure to also add a second M5 nut onto the feeder arm bolt to give it more leverage. Position the nut as far down the bolt as you can. Next, take the feeder assembly and remove the four screws from the back of the NUMA 17 motor. Take an M3 by 45mm bolt and push a M3 spring washer down it and push in through the mounting hole on the back panel, slide onto the bolt an M3 washer followed by an M3 rubber damper followed by another M3 washer and repeat the same again with three more bolts and attach the feeder onto these bolts like so. The next step is to build the extruder. It is the exact same method as uh, described in part D2. Uh, the only difference of course is that you won't need a, uh, a second proximity sensor. Next we'll prep the dual extruder carriage by um, pushing an M3 nut into these two slots on the top here and another M3 nylock nut into um, the back slot here. We'll take an M3 by 16mm bolt and thread it into that nylock nut until it catches onto the nylon uh, ring. This step of the build assumes that you did install the single carriage. Uh, here you will be required to remove the single extruder like so and remove the belt from the single carriage and remove the single carriage from the bushings like so. You will then need to replace the single tool carriage with a dual tool carriage like so. Some of the dual carriages that were shipped out uh, are slightly wider than they should be. Um, if your dual carriage doesn't slide uh, smoothly like the single carriage, uh, you will need a replacement one. To get a replacement dual carriage, please send an email to info at makeatech-3d.com with the subject line new dual carriage and in the message also mention your shipping address and I'll get one out to you uh, ASAP. So we'll essentially be attaching the dual carriage in the same way that we attached the single carriage and then we'll attach the uh, single extruder uh, from the single uh, carriage assembly onto the left hand side and we'll attach the second extruder that we built onto the right hand side like so. Attach as shown in the diagram with M3 by 22mm bolt and M3 spring washers and fix the cables onto the back of the carriage using cable ties. Next we'll take approximately 70cm of GT2 belt and as before with a single carriage install it onto the left side of the dual carriage first and clamp down with a M3 by 12mm bolt and then uh, take the belt and wrap it around the X motor pulley and then around the X idler on the other side and then push it in through the right hand side of the dual carriage and tighten down with another M3 by 12mm bolt and as before fasten this screw with the belt tight uh, you want to get the belt about as tight as a guitar string um, if you do find that the nut inside the dual carriage starts to slip I recommend taking a small screwdriver like this and jamming it in there and that should hold the nut in place while you uh, tighten the belt um, tighten the bolt down onto the belt Next, connect the PTFE tubing from the extruder feeders to the hot ends. Make sure that the tube reaches all the way down to the nozzle. This should be around 63mm from the top of the coupler on the hot end. Also install a second spool holder on the frame with two M4x12mm bolts. 
Next, route the cables along the back and use cable ties to hold them securely onto the frame. And finally, wire up everything as according to the diagram on the build manual. Next, you will need to level the hot end nozzles with the plane of the bed. Begin this step by having both mounts tightly screwed in against the tool carriage. So for example, currently the extruder on the right is about half a millimeter higher than the extruder on the left. Um, so what I'm going to do is loosen the two M3 by 22mm bolts that are holding the um, extruder onto the carriage and I'm going to do so by turning them uh, anti-clockwise a quarter turn and then checking again the distance between the bed and the two nozzles and I'm going to carry on doing that quarter turn at a time until I'm happy that the two nozzles are uh, level with the plane of the bed so by using a piece of paper that's folded in half I can feel that the gap between the two nozzles and the print surface is about the same. With the hardware now installed head over to the github page and download the dual firmware and use the Arduino IDE to upload it. Next power up the Proforge and adjust the proximity sensor so that it triggers when positioned above the tip of the nozzle Aim to have it trigger when the nozzle is only a millimetre or so away from the bed. On your computer, open up Repetir Host and head into Config, Printer Settings and create a Proforge Dual Profile and match the settings shown on screen. Next, run through the firmware tests outlined in the Part H tutorial. The steps are repeated for wholeness in the written build manual. Do so until you get to positioning the X-Home offset. For the dual setup, you will need to adjust the bolt on the carriage that triggers the XN stop so that after homing the X-axis and sending a G1 X0 command, the nozzle lands directly on the edge of the build surface. To begin a dual print, import the two STL models that will make up the part. There are some example dual extrusion models on the GitHub page. For this tutorial, I will be using the Two Color Tree Frog by Nervous System. Begin by placing both the models in the same group and selecting an extruder for each one. Arrange and center the model as appropriate. Next, upload the Cura Slicer settings from the GitHub page and set the filament settings for your filament. The PLA default is 180 for the hot end and 60 for the bed. Once happy with the settings, hit Slice with Cura Engine and save the G-code to your SD card. Insert the SD card into the LCD display and navigate down to the print from SD and click on your G-code to begin the print. Make sure to have two filaments ready and loaded into the hot ends.